Shavnam Diaries Podcast Reading Bhagavad Gita as it is the book by his divine grace Abhay Charanaravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Chapter 4 Transcendental Knowledge Text 18 Karmanya karma yah pashyed a karma nicha karma yat Sabudhiman Manushyeshu Sayuktah Kritsna Karma Krit One who sees action in inaction and inaction in action is intelligent among men and he is in the transcendental position although engaged in all sorts of activities. Purport A person acting in Krishna Consciousness is naturally free from the bonds of karma. His activities are all performed for Krishna. Therefore, he does not enjoy or suffer any of the effects of work. Right, so hence seeing inaction in action and action in inaction. Okay. Consequently, he is intelligent in human society, even though he is engaged in all sorts of activities for Krishna. A karma means without reaction to work. The impersonalist ceases fruitive activities out of fear, so that the resultant action may not be a stumbling block on the path of self-realization. But the personalist knows rightly his position as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he engages himself in the activities of Krishna Consciousness. Because everything is done for Krishna, he enjoys only transcendental happiness in the discharge of this service. Those who are engaged in this process are known to be without desire for personal sense gratification. The sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna makes one immune to all sorts of reactionary elements of work. Hmm. This is such an important point. The sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna makes one immune immune to all sorts of reactionary elements of work. Remember yesterday we were reading about the intricacies of the laws of karma. So our immunity from all those intricacies is the sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna. Mm. This is this is beautiful. Imagine being freed from all the reactions of karma and simply enjoying uh, how Prabhupada says the transcendental happiness in the discharge of service to the Lord. Okay, text 19. Yasya sarve samara bha kama sankalpa varjita gyanagni dagdha karmanam tam ahu panditam buddha. One is understood to be in full knowledge, whose every endeavor is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker for whom the reactions of work have been burnt up by the fire of perfect knowledge. Oh, this beautiful. Fire of perfect knowledge. I love how it sounds. Purport. Only a person in full knowledge can understand the activities of a person in Krishna consciousness. Because the person in Krishna consciousness is devoid of all kinds of sense gratificatory 
propensities. It is to be understood that he has burnt up the reactions of his work by perfect knowledge of his constitutional position as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. See, it's not enough to know, just to know about that, okay, I'm Krishna's eternal servant, right? I know this. I know this. Do I perfectly know this? That's a different question. This is the difference. And many times, I mean, no offense to anybody from India, but many times, um, even Indian devotees, Indian body devotees, they share that they uh, try to preach, they give like Krishna conscious literature to Indians, and they say, ah, we already know everything. Of course, I mean, you were born in this culture. You know there is karma, you know there is Krishna, you know you are like, uh, your sevaka, you know what is bhakti. Okay, you know this, but do you perfectly know this? That's a different question, right? <laughs> yeah. So, do you have that fire of perfect knowledge that has burnt up all the reactions of work and now every endeavor of yours is devoid for desire for sense gratification? That's a good question. Okay. Mm, he's actually learned who has attained to such perfect to such perfection of knowledge. Development of this knowledge of eternal servitorship to the Lord is compared to fire. Mm. So when you develop this knowledge of eternal servitorship to the Lord, that's like fire. Such a fire, once kindled, can burn up all kinds of reactions to work. Haribol. Text 20. Tyaktva karma phala sangam nitya tripto nirashraya karma nya bhi pravritto pi naiva kinchit karoti saha abandoning all attachment to the results of his activities, ever satisfied and independent. He performs no fruitive action, although engaged in all kinds of undertakings. Jai. I really like how, you know, there's three um, such a person is characterized by three, is it? Statements. So he abandoned all attachments, right? To the results. He's ever satisfied. Imagine, ever satisfied. And he's independent. Sometimes we think that if I become a devotee of the Lord, if I become the servant of Krishna, I will lose my independence. Now I do whatever I want. No. Now you are bound up by the laws of karma, by the laws of the material nature, and you can barely do anything, technically speaking, in the, from the eternal perspective, right? But a devotee, he is engaged in all kinds of undertakings, and he is truly independent. He is ever satisfied. Jai. Okay, purport. This freedom from the bondage of actions is possible only in Krishna consciousness. When one is doing everything for Krishna, a Krishna conscious person acts out of pure love, pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore he has no attraction for the results of the action. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Again, see, I when I read such statements, I'm like, but what about we need to offer the best for Krishna and we need to not mess up for Krishna. <laughs> we need to. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely we try our best because if you're trying to act with love and devotion, you try to do your best. But... Prabhupada says one has no attraction for the results of the action. 
because we simply want to serve the Lord. Okay. Next, he is not even attached to his personal maintenance, for everything is left to Krishna. Nor is he anxious to secure things, nor to protect things already in his possession. He does his duty to the best of his ability and leaves everything to Krishna. See? We do our duty to the best of our ability. But it's not like unless you have the best result, then you messed up. And this understanding really doesn't sit well with me because, it, not because it's wrong, but because I guess I'm in such a material <laughs> concept, of my, I'm materially conditioned so deeply that uh, I'm very much attached to results. But uh, reading this, it's, it's really breaking all paradigms. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, we've read it so many times, but now... I really wonder even deep, deeply about this. Okay, let's read this again. Um, he is not even attached to his personal maintenance, for everything is left to Krishna. Nor is he anxious to secure things, nor to protect things already in his possession. He does his duty to the best of his ability and leaves everything to Krishna. Such an unattached person is always free from the resultant reactions of good and bad. It is as though he were not doing anything. This is the sign of a karma or actions without fruitive reactions. Any other action, therefore, devoid of Krishna consciousness, is binding upon the worker, and that is the real aspect of vikarma, as explained herein before. Hmm. Text 21 Nirashiryat chittat ma tyakta sarva parigraha Shariram kevalam karma kurvanna pnoti kilbisham Such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence, perfectly controlled, gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life. Thus working, he is not affected by sinful reactions. Purport A Krishna conscious person does not expect good or bad results in his activities. His mind and senses his mind, excuse me, his mind and intelligence are fully controlled. He knows that because he is part and parcel of the Supreme, the part played by him as a part and parcel of the whole is not his own activity that is only being done through him by the Supreme. When the hand moves, it does not move out of its own accord, but by the endeavor of the whole body. A Krishna conscious person is always dovetailed with the supreme desire, for he has no desire for personal sense gratification. He moves exactly like a part of a machine. As a machine part, requires oiling and cleaning for maintenance, so a Krishna conscious man maintains himself by his work just to remain fit for action in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. He is therefore immune to all the reactions of his endeavors. Like an animal, he has no proprietorship 
even over his own body. A cruel proprietor of an animal sometimes kills the animal in his possession, yet the animal does not protest, nor does it have any real independence. A Krishna conscious person, fully engaged in self-realization, has very little time to falsely possess any material object. For maintaining body and soul, he does not require unfair means of accumulating money. He does not therefore become contaminated by such material sins. He is free from all reactions to his actions. Okay, so Srila Prabhupada gives a couple of examples. One is that we are acting as if we are a part of the body, like a hand. Hand moves because the body wants the hand to move. The second example is like a machine. A part of a machine works in perfect harmony with the entire machine, right? Right? It's not like you have an iPhone and the screen of iPhone just decide, decides to walk away and do, does do his own business, <laughs> right? Then second, uh, this is the second example. Third example is like an animal who belongs to the proprietor. The animal just does everything the owner wants. Okay, interesting. So, um, some people may find this last two examples of a machine and an, an and an animal to be like a little extreme but actually <laughs> when you talk about the all-encompassing relationship with the supreme lord it goes to maximum extent you know even in the material relationship sometimes you can find that there is such awesome synergy that like two people or three people or you know five people they can work in perfect harmony or there is like in relationships which are more confidential or more intimate there are relationships where one has complete control over the other and it's always praised by the poets and the writers you know the love between say the lover and the beloved where one is completely like at the mercy of the other and sometimes it's considered to be unhealthy according to modern uh, therapists I would say but uh, when it comes to the transcendental relationship it's just perfection because the Lord he would do anything for the devotee and the devotee would do anything for the Lord and this particular I would like for myself to remember and for anybody who listens to this particular point that you know like just wait until we complete Bhagavad Gita complete Srimad Bhagavatam and then go for Chaitanya Charitamrita where the relationship between the Supreme Lord and his devotees are described when Haridas Thakur was supposed to be beaten up at 40 marketplaces because he was chanting the holy names just because he was a saintly devotee, some envious people, they wanted to beat him up to death at 40 marketplaces. The Lord, the Supreme Lord, he was covering Haridas Thakur and he was taking all the beating himself. Haridas Thakur would not, or one of the most amazing examples also, I mean, this is the most amazing example, like Haridas Thakur and then uh, Lord Chaitanya, he showed the scars on his back from the beating. Second example that comes to mind is Ambarisha Maharaj. When Durvasa Muni, a very powerful yogi, he was upset with Ambarisha Maharaj because Ambarisha Maharaj drank water to break a Kadashi and uh, he wanted to kill him. And he created this demon because he was a very great mystic. Ambarisha Maharaj, he did not like protest. You can say that this is like the example of a, like an animal who has like even if he would be killed he would not protest Ambarisha Maharaj he was such a pure devotee he was not protesting but 
Lord Vishnu, he was protesting. He sent his Sudarshana chakra to protect Ambarisha Maharaj. And Durvasa Muni was running all over the three worlds because Sudarshana chakra was chasing him. So this is, imagine such a relationship that you give yourself entirely, completely, you're at the mercy of another person or supreme personality and he takes care of you like to the same extent or even more because he is the supreme. All right, we're going to stop here for today. Yes. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The book links Previous episodes, timeline, and biography of the author can be found on shravanamdiaries.com. The link is in the description, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.